playing with different colours, different size brushes. What colours work well together? What happens when you use a large brush and put little dots on top? What happens when you use a little brush and put big dots on top? So a little bit of water on the bottom and then using a big brush. Remember to dab, dab and drag, pull them around. What happens to the colours when you blend them together? What happens to the brush as you put a lot of water on it? Spend some time noticing what looks interesting to you. What happens if you use the tip of the brush, the side of the brush? What happens if you dab it? Just lying it down. You might notice the differences between where you've put some water and it's dried already. What happens when you put wet paint over the top of that? What happens when you use a dry brush over the wet paint? What different marks can you make? Spend some time exploring using your own techniques and your different types of brushes, big brushes, little brushes. Now, because you're doing this at home, you can spend as long as you like, fill as many pages as you like. You can try different types of paper, copy paper, newspaper, rice paper, kitchen paper, paper towel, toilet paper. This is the fun that you get to have exploring with your medium. I could do this for hours. <laughs>
something on your page that makes you feel uncomfortable and you don't you don't like it sit with that feeling and breathe it's okay if you want to you can change your piece of paper at any time you can have lots of pieces of paper going at the same time you can use as many pieces of paper as you like but I do encourage you that if you've got something on your page that you're not so keen on just keep going you might change the shape change the direction of the paper you might turn it around so it's on a different angle look at it from a different perspective how does it feel to do the different marks how does it feel when you change something just notice each thought or feeling as it comes up there's no right or wrong this is a safe place to to experiment with your mark making and to allow those different thoughts and feelings to come there's no right or wrong here only just the little marks on the page and how it makes you feel so keep on playing keep on exploring Keep on allowing your imagination to go deep into your picture. When you filled up your page, sit back and have a look at it. What do you see? What do you notice? When I look at this page, my eye is drawn to this part here. I love the way the darker maroon is blending with the blue and the little tiny lines that go in between it. I didn't put them there. Those were things that happened all by themselves. The water and the paint, they mixed together to create that. I love those happy accidents, the things that are outside of my control that make something beautiful. I love the lines here where the dark maroon fades into the lighter maroon. I made that by lying my brush down on its side and the water collected and pulled and it's darker on one side of the brush. What marks have you made on the page or what happy accidents have happened while you've been playing with the paint? What do you notice and what do you appreciate? What do you see? How did it happen? Try and think about the things on your page that you liked and try and recreate that. We're gonna spend some time now thinking about how we made those special marks on the page. Choose some that you'd like to recreate and then find a new piece of paper and you'll spend some time recreating those marks that you like. An important thing to know about watercolours. When you start with the dark paint, you can't go light again unless you use a lot of water to lift that paint back off. We start with something light and go darker as we build up layers. And in my experience, that's the most effective way, especially if your paper is quite thin. I'm going to use my um, more expensive watercolor paper to build up some layers. A lot of things happen on the page that you might not expect, and that's okay. That's part of the wildness and the beauty of watercolor. What did you like? In your last image. I think that I really liked some of the um, lying my brush down and what that reminded me of was um, like flowers so I'm gonna just put some different leaf shapes and flower sort of petal shapes down with water on my page because I, I really liked them and I've got some blue water here. Um, that's okay because I'm going to continue using the same colours. But if your paint has made your water a different colour, I do invite you to go and change your water. Ooh, that shape reminds me actually of a bird. So as you're playing, I want, I want you to go with the mistakes. Go with 
What does it remind you of? Ooh. You might just be watching this video or you might be joining in and creating as you go. But I do want to encourage you to play with your own paints as you go. Seeing what happens. What do you like? What are you trying to notice or recreate? I'm noticing that some of these remind me of little birds and I'm liking that. So I'm trying to direct my paintbrush to those kind of shapes. What kind of shapes are you making with your brush? What do they remind you of? You can use as many colours as you like. You can, anytime you want to change colour, um, wash your brush in between. If you like the colours blending together and you don't want to change the colour of your brush, that's also okay. There's a combination of colours called harmonious colours and whatever colours on the rainbow together next to each other, that's a harmonious colour and they bleed together very nicely. So the colours that are next to each other in the rainbow, if you choose three colours, that are next to each other, then that's a good harmonious uh, combination and they they usually uh, don't create brown when, the, when they mix together. So red and yellow and orange are an example of that. Also blue, purple and um, red are a good combination. 